Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so, um, as I said in the last video, it's very important that you watch these videos in order. Um, in particular, um, for this video, it's important that you understand or at least know the result of example two, because we're going to use that result we observed in example two in a part of this video. Yeah, otherwise what we're doing is really cool and really fun. And so here it is. So we're gonna consider a polynomial P of Z of a complex variable Z. And this polynomial is of degree N and it has N simple roots. And none of uh, the N simple roots um, lies on a simple closed contour C. Okay, cool. Now, uh, since our polynomial P of Z is a polynomial uh, of a complex variable, it's hard to visualize, but like you, I was curious what a simple root would be as opposed to a double root. And, um, you know, just to satisfy your curiosity and mine, like uh, here is uh, Mathematica's Visuales or whatever, like, yeah, but like um, from uh, this source, here is a visual of a cop. Uh, a polynomial <laughs> I don't know what I was gonna say a polynomial a calinomial I don't know a polynomial I suppose it should be called a calinomial it's a complex anyway anyway yeah so here's uh, one visual of um, a polynomial of a complex variable or a complex polynomial if you want to call it that and here's another one that like d will help you distinguish or get a feel for what uh, the difference is uh, between simple root and um, double roots, uh, repeater roots, yeah? Okay, 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 uh, but enough with this, because uh, um, let's focus on the task at hand, because the task at hand invariably was going to be an integral, right? And it is. Um, it is uh, the integral um, over the um, simple close contour C of uh, the quotient p prime of z over uh, p of z dz times 1 over 2 pi i is what we're seeking here. So this is what we're doing. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, the fact that uh, the polynomial is of degree n and it has n simple roots means that all of the roots are distinct or unique. Um, because, well, if polynomial has um, n roots and it's of degree n, then all of its roots are unique, right? that's easy enough to know. And so then what that means is that our polynomial can be factored like this. So we can write P of Z um, with the roots A1, A2, all the way through AN, right? And there may be a constant A multiplying these um, factors, right? Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, P of Z is something like this. Now, uh, something really cool um, can be observed, which is P prime of Z divided by P of Z, that's just the derivative of the log of P of Z. Uh, so this is what I just said. What I just said is notice that the quotient P prime of Z over P of Z is just the derivative of log of P of Z because the derivative of log of P of Z would be one over P of Z times uh, P prime of Z. And that's exactly this here. Yeah, okay, cool. So then we could write that P prime of Z over P of Z is equal to the derivative of the log of this right-hand side. All right, cool. So that means that we could next um, write uh, this. Now, the right-hand side is nice because we have the log, what's called product rule, which would allow us to write the log of A times this times this times this is just log of A plus log of Z minus A. Um, a1 plus log of z minus a2 plus blah 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 plus log of um, z minus a n and if we take the derivative of each one of those n plus one logs well log of a derivative is going to be uh, zero because it's a constant but uh, log of uh, z minus uh, a1 the derivative is going to be one over z minus a1 and then plus the derivative of log of z minus a2, well, that's going to be 1 over z minus a2, and so on and so forth. You get it. So basically, applying the log product rule on this, right, on this part, and then applying the derivative here, what we're going to get is that uh, the quotient p prime of z over p of z is going to look like this, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. 
because now and now you can anticipate um, where the result of example two is going to be useful, right? But yeah, now we just need to throw an integral sign, right? And uh, in front of the integral, one over two pi i, right? And so doing that in this part will mean that we'll get this, right? Okay, cool. Now, um, in the last video, we did the integral of one over two pi i over a simple closed contour of um, one over z minus a to the power m dz. And then we said that uh, when z minus a to the power m has m equaling one, then the integral is going to equal one. That's the result of example two. So watch that again if you need to. Okay, so that means that first, this right-hand side, we can write as follows, which is this, right? Which is we can, you know, give them their individual integral sign. Now, each of these is going to be equal to one by example two. And so we see that the integral i is going to be equal to the number of roots that the polynomial uh, p of z has lying inside of the contour c of course yeah okay cool all right i hope you um enjoyed this and understood it and if you have questions ask but um i thought it was really really cool and yeah so i thought i'd share uh take care bye